Hi, it's uh, Thursday, uh, December 24th, Christmas Eve, uh, 2015. Uh, I'm going to be speaking about the U.S. dollar and how it's going to be the biggest casualty of lower oil prices and commodity prices that we've seen for the last uh, over uh, 12 months, you know, last 18 months. Um, and that will lead you know, to mayhem in other currencies because the dollar is the global reserve currency. So one of the major, well, the major reason why I think the dollar will be the biggest casualty is because back in the 70s, uh, after 1971, when President Nixon took the uh, dollar off the uh, Bretton Woods system, which was a gold exchange system, gold back system, in August of 1971, uh, then... Uh, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, he put a deal with the Saudi uh, Saudi government or Saudi Arabian royal family, whatever you want to call it. They put a deal that uh, Saudi Arabia, which was accumulating uh, a lot of uh, dollar reserves and a lot of foreign reserves, mainly because of the oil embargo in 1973, uh, Henry Kissinger basically said, uh, Mr. King in Saudi Arabia, I think it was King uh, Faisal at the time, he said, uh, we will protect you militarily, you know, uh, your kingdom, uh, but you will have to price your oil in dollars. And that was the deal. And Saudi Arabia was the biggest oil producer at the time, it was the leader of OPEC. So that's led uh, that led to the what's called, even today, the petrodollar. So instead of being backed by gold uh, from the Bretton Woods system, the dollar was now backed uh, by uh, oil. And Saudi Arabia was the backbone, or still is the backbone of that system. Uh, and one of the reasons why that's so important is because... Uh, with oil be, being priced in dollars all over the world, every country in the world needs to buy and also sell oil, depending if they're a net exporter or not. Um, so what that means is that the higher the oil price is, the more dollars uh, every country in the world will have, uh, you know, to have to buy the oil. And, they'll, and the more... Uh, you know, it will be very important for every country to accumulate dollars in order to purchase uh, oil or any other commodities because oil being the most important commodity that, you know, that's, that led to all commodities being priced in, in dollar, uh, dollars, you know, wheat, uh, coffee, everything. So uh, the other side of the coin is that a lot of the uh, countries like Saudi Arabia and all the big oil producers, uh, including OPEC countries, they have accumulated uh, huge uh, reserves of U.S. dollars, which they've recycled into treasury bills, which are uh, treasury debt, U.S. treasury debt up to one year. Uh, they've, they've bought treasury notes, which are uh, treasury uh, debt up to 10 years, and they've bought treasury bonds which uh, is a uh, 30-year bond uh, in the U.S. So the, the higher the oil price is, you know, the more dollars they have, the more treasuries they need to buy. So if you look at uh, Wikipedia, and I'll put these links below, uh, the biggest, uh, you know, oil producers in the world um, are, you know, the top 10, you've got Saudi Arabia, Russia, China, Canada, uh, UAE, uh, Iran, Iraq, Mexico, and Brazil. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the order they're in, in terms of producers, but those are the biggest 10 producers. I never knew that China was such a big uh, oil producer in the top 10. The U.S. is in there as well, but I didn't put the U.S. in there because the U.S. doesn't need to, uh, you know, they they produce the uh, dollars, so <laughs> and uh, they don't export uh, oil either. Even though I think recently that that's changed, uh, Obama's just come out and they they will be able to export again. But anyway, 
uh, these oil producers, they have huge amounts of uh, treasury uh, or, you know, foreign, foreign exchange reserves. Uh, and they're not all in dollars, but, uh, you know, I'm reading an article here from Bloomberg, um, and it says the greenbacks share of foreign exchange reserves fell in the second quarter to 63.7% of total allocated reserves. Uh, from 64% in the first three months of the year. This article was uh, in September, end of September this year. So um, all the uh, foreign exchange reserves might not all be dollars, but a big chunk of it is. So for example, Saudi Arabia has, uh, uh, according to uh, Wikipedia, uh, the latest figures, $662 billion uh, in uh, foreign reserves. They might not all be dollars, but the big, big, the majority of it is. Russia has three hundred seventy-one billion. China, we know China's got a lot, three point six trillion of foreign reserves. Canada, not so much, seventy-nine billion. UAE, United Arab Emirates has seventy-four point seven. Iran has one hundred ten billion. Iraq, seventy-four billion. Brazil has a big. Uh, uh, foreign exchange reserves was 357 billion and Mexico has 177 billion uh, and what's happened though in the last uh, 18 months or so uh, not only with the oil price going down but all commodities going down a lot of the countries uh, in the emerging markets and the oil producers they've been hurt oil you know the oil price was stuck around 80 to 100 dollars uh, you know 12 to 18 months ago I don't know exactly uh, and now, you know, we're trading below $40. Uh, and uh, there is an article in, on Bloomberg.com, uh, and I will put a link to it. Uh, it came out in uh, September as well. And it said the title, uh, it was entitled, $50 oil puts Saudi budget deficit beyond, beyond reach of spending cuts. So that was with... Uh, you know, oil at $50. And uh, in that article, uh, it says the international, and I'm quoting here, the International Monetary Fund predicts Saudi Arabia's budget deficit to exceed 400 billion rials, which is $107 billion this year alone, with oil accounting for 81% of revenue compared with about 90% previously. It ex expects shortfalls above 10% of GDP for the next four years. So can you imagine that 10% budget deficits for the next four years? And that was with oil at $50. Now, you know, we're like around 37, I think. And uh, even if oil, uh, you know, and commodities stabilize and uh, let's say, <clears throat> you know, uh, oil uh, stays around 40 to 50 dollars uh, Saudi Arabia is going to have difficulty uh, you know with its budget and uh, you know these big budget de deficits uh, by oil producers uh, and also you know commodity producers like Brazil that will uh, lead them to liquidate their foreign exchange reserves, which are mostly dollars, in order to c cover the hole in their budgets, because their budgets were planned, uh, and they never envisioned uh, oil prices and commodity prices so low. So they're in trouble now, those countries. So even, uh, and, and now, you know, I'll talk about how that will hurt the U.S. dollar because you're probably saying, oh, the dollar has been strong lately. You know, all the other uh, currencies have been collapsing or going down sharply. But, you know, don't forget the United States uh, Treasury has the, is the biggest, you know, the United States is the biggest debtor country in the world. And I'll put uh, a link to the U.S. debt clock. And I recommend you, you look at that. It gives you a headache looking at these numbers. But uh, right now, the U.S. Treasury uh, has a national debt of $18.8 trillion. And you, looking at that clock, it's not going down. It's, <laughs> it's going up by the, by the second. And uh, the latest uh, U.S. federal 
budget deficit is also moving up. It's not going down, and it's $442 billion. So even if we give the U.S. Treasury the, the, the great benefit of, of, that, of the doubt that they will run a, a balanced budget anytime soon, even if they do that, um, the U.S. Treasury has got so much debt that every, every month, you know, uh, existing debt matures. And the only way for them to, to pay that maturing debt is by issuing more and more debt. And, and that keeps increasing every time they're running a budget deficit. And as you can see, looking at that debt clock, uh, doesn't look like they're going to run a balanced budget anytime soon. So, you know, that's why I think it's a big problem. You know, we've got all these, uh, you know, supporters of the petrodollar system, uh, all the other countries outside the United States that are running out of uh, reserves. They're not earning as many dollars and their budgets are, you know, in a big hole. They're going to have to start, if they haven't yet already, they're going to have to start selling their dollar holdings. And that means T-bills, T-notes, T-bonds. And that will lead to higher interest rates and a lower dollar. Um, so, yeah, my conclusion is that with QE finished, you know, the Fed has even raised rates now, you know, on the 16th of December for the first time in nine years. So they're nowhere, uh, nowhere near doing QE again. If, uh, you know, they're going to do QE again, they have to come out and say they're going to stop uh, raising rates, which they have said they're going to raise another four times in 2016. Um, you know, and as I said earlier, even if oil stabilizes, even if miraculously the U.S. Treasury starts running uh, surpluses or a balanced budget, you know, who is going to be buying, you know, all the U.S. debt? Um, if anything, these countries are going to, you know, need to sell uh, their dollar reserves to patch up, uh, you know, their budget deficits and their, uh, you know, failing uh, economies. Um, so, you know, and that's, you know, with oil stabilizing here, you know, maybe between 40 and 50, that would be, you know, better. But what if oil, like many, uh, you know, many commentators or even Goldman Sachs, what if oil goes down to 20 and commodities go even lower? I mean, uh, I think the U.S. dollar will be the, you know, the U.S. dollar is not hurting now, but it will because, the U.S. is the biggest, biggest debtor nation in the world. It, it runs the biggest budget deficit in the world. Uh, you know, who's going to finance that? And especially with the Fed, unless they make a huge U-turn and say, oh, we're going to stop. We're not going to raise rates anymore. We're going to cut back to zero and actually we're going to start doing QE. What credibility would they have then? So this is, uh, in my opinion, uh, quite... Uh, you know, interesting. And I think looking, you know, at Brazil, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and China, you know, all the problems they've had this year, Brazil, uh, you know, the currency is still in free fall right now. 10-year uh, domestic uh, government bond yields are above 16% now in Brazil. So, you know, Russia had problems because they're big oil producers. You know, oil keeps going lower and the Chinese economy slows down and the global economy slows down and China doesn't need as many as much commodities. You know, there's going to be a, an avalanche of dollar selling, but there could be, you know, by these major uh, emerging market countries or the BRIC countries. What about all the other small, smaller ones? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, with this in mind, I, I've also noted that the web bot... Uh, of Cliff High, halfpasshuman.com, is calling for a monetary crisis in March slash April of 2016. Could it be related to all this? Uh, it might be. Uh, yeah, 
a monetary crisis, uh, a global monetary crisis can only be related to the dollar. So because the dollar is the reserve currency, the dollar is like the anchor of the global uh, monetary system. If you, envis if, if you envision the uh, US dollar as a huge tanker and it's anchored in all the other countries that are like tender boats attached to the US dollar, uh, if the uh, dollar anchor rips or breaks apart, you know, it's not only the dollar that will uh, be in trouble, but all the other little boats or other fiat currencies that are attached to the dollar, they will also, you know, suffer because they're connected to the dollar. So, yeah, uh, even though, as I said, uh, the dollar has strengthened a lot, you know, in the last 18 months, uh, against a basket of currencies and individual currencies, uh, I think the dollar will be the biggest casualty uh, of the uh, lower oil and commodity prices. Uh, that doesn't mean that all the other currencies will do well because they're all, you know, uh, linked to the dollar and they're a derivative of the U.S. dollar. But... Uh, one currency or two currencies that are the anti-dollar will do well, and that's physical gold and silver. Uh, I'm sure you guys are not surprised by that comment. Uh, take care. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.